you're thinking about the expense side of things now be bro being broken out. This could be a quite long report uh, if you had a lot of vendors, which oftentimes people do. And then you can do it the same by employees, products and services. So if we run it by products and services, now you've got them uh, up top and you can see what you're selling in terms of income and, and the cost of goods sold that's associated with the income on a product by product basis, which could be uses useful. And then you have your tags. Tags is a special kind of tool that is another sorting category. And you can see you can sort it here. You might also, if, as we're thinking about these, if you have uh, if you have class tracking on, you can also often basically sort your income statement by class tracking. Those are specialty tools, class tracking and tags, location tracking, similar tools. We have another section or course specializing in those areas as well. So that's going to be one way that you can do comparative reports. Let's go back to the total. Another way that you can do the comparative uh, types of reports is that you can say, I want to have the current period and then compare it to the prior period. So if we want to compare December to the prior month of uh, November, I can change the range up top to 11. Let's go to 12, 12, 01, 23. So now I have the month of December up top, just the month of December. And then I want to compare it to the prior month, selecting the drop down. I can say, give me the prior month and it defaults here to November. That looks correct. So I'm just going to say, let's run that. So now we have a comparative report, but now they put the current month first and that's fine because that's our most important month. And then the prior month second, also note with these comparative reports, we can only compare two periods because likely with the comparative reports, the next step you want to do is not add up the two periods, having a total, which is nice too on the income statement where it's not as big deal on the balance sheet. But what you want to do instead is subtract them to see the difference in what your performance was in the current month versus the prior month in this case. So if I select the drop down, we say, give me the dollar change, por favor, if you please. I'm going to pull out the trusty calculator. And so we can do some calculations. So then, of course, we have, for example, the totals down here, 2455.64. Mi well, wait, that's not right. The current month is up top 1296.58 minus the 2455.64. That gives us the negative 115906. Uh, that's great. We can compare that to our prior months and stuff and how we're how we've been doing in the past. But if we want to compare it to another company, like if we were a McDonald's and we want to, if we were like a hamburger shop and we want to compare to McDonald's or something, they make way too much money for me to think to compare my dollars to dollars. But we could compare possibly percentages when we benchmark. And so if we run the percentages in our performance type report, percent change, run that one, run that one. So now if I do that same thing, I've got the 1269.58 minus the 2455.64. That gives us a negative 155 or 115906. And then I divide that by the prior month. That's how you do the percent increase or decrease by the prior month, 2455.64. And that gives us, if I move the decimal two places over, a 48.2% increase. So if we, or decrease, I'm sorry, because it was a negative here. But if, so if hamburger sales went down by, for us by 48%, that's terrible, or whatever the sale, and I compared that to like a McDonald's, did their sales follow a similar trend? would be the question. If they did, then maybe the assumption would be, of course, that it's a market thing and not an us thing. It's not that people just got mad at us and they they canceled us on the YouTubes or something. And then now no one likes us and they keep on t stealing our hamburgers and throwing them at people for some reason, because I don't know what happened. But in any case, now we could say we could do it in, on these ones like 247.81 minus 227.01. We get the 120. I can take that and divide it by the prior month, 127.01. And then that's going to be 95.11% uh, increase in this case, right? And we can see that on a line by line basis. That's nice. I can, I can customize this report like I typically would. 
customizing up top because it might be used for external usages and we do our normal negative numbers bracketed i often will remove the pennies show it in red and then in the headers and footers we might remove the date time report basis then of course we might change the name now on the profit and loss the basic name change you might do if it was just a normal profit and loss is call it an income statement just that might stand you apart a little bit because maybe some people see maybe some people see that as more like a professional or whatever they like to call it an income statement rather than a profit and loss it just depends on what you've what you've gotten used to i guess so you can then call it an income statement and uh there but when we do a comparative we might want to call it a comparative income statement so now it's a comparative income statement and then of course once we do this if we're going to save this to our external reporting like we did with the balance sheets we might want to save